Hi, this is your host, Swapni Bharatiya. Though we don't hold a crystal ball in our hands, but we still want to talk and, and kind of look into what things will look like in 2021. And today we have with us our regular Boris Rensky, now CEO and founder at Freedom5. Boris, first of all, tell us a bit about what is Freedom5 all about? So Freedom5, in a nutshell, helps companies build 5G and LTE networks that are extremely cost efficient by delivering solutions that are based on uh, open source software, commodity hardware, and usually a um, shared or lightly regulated spectrum. Now let's talk about the three predictions that you have. I think uh, going into the future, specifically uh, next 12 months, we'll see uh, um, a few interesting things happening. Um, first is that we will see continued democratization of um, LTE and 5G spectrum. Um, historically, uh, spectrum was very hard to get and costed, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, but um, in the last couple of years and starting this year specifically, um, we saw programs like CBRS come online where people, you know, can basically get their spectrum grant with an API call and just, you know, um, 10, 15, 20 dollars per CBSD. Um, and I think that going into the future, we'll continue to see acceleration of this trend. So uh, in US, FCC is already talking about um, opening up uh, 200 megahertz of spectrum directly underneath CBRS, potentially um, using the same shared model. There is a lot of interesting conversations going on with uh, other regulatory bodies like Ofcon, and this trend will accelerate. Now, the second um, is um, just like we kind of see with Spectrum, I think that we will continue to see um, more um, end user choice and freedom with respect to the specific you know, devices or phones that they use. So um, to explain a little bit more concretely, like if you think back when the whole you know, mobile network industry started, um, pretty much all phones were locked to a provider. Like you would get a phone from Verizon and you have a Verizon phone. And not only can you not switch a phone, you can't even switch the phone number to another provider. And then during the last 10, 15 years, we've seen kind of a continued liberalization of it, starting with a phone number being kind of belonging to the person, you can switch it anywhere. Then you started to see the industry of kind of the phones being unlocked and you know being able to buy an unlocked phone and actually having multiple carriers on the phone, et cetera. So I think this coming year, um, a lot of that is gonna get dramatically accelerated uh, by the introduction of eSIM. So the eSIM is something that people have been talking for about like a long, long time. But this year, we actually see um, most of the tier one phones coming out with eSIM and dual SIM capability. And today, particularly in the US, people still don't even know that they have an SIM. But this opens up a huge opportunity for smaller carriers, neutral host networks to start introducing their offerings and making it possible for an end user to choose that, you know, I can have Verizon as my primary network and I can have, I don't know, Los Gatos Town network as my secondary network for data. And I think that we'll start seeing a lot of that happening. And the final prediction, and this is again, you know, kind of tied directly to what we're doing in Freedom Fire is because of those two things, because of liberalization of spectrum and because of more freedom vis-a-vis -vis the providers you can choose enabled by things like eSIM, we will see a lot more open source um, coming into the uh, telecommunication stack and being used in production. Up until now, open source has been largely limited to like testing and niche experimentation and R&D, but because of this just, you know, um, democratization happening both from the spectrum side and the consumer side, um, there is an opportunity for more innovative kind of a greenfield um, operators coming in and, you know, introducing new interesting business models. And uh, that will kind of a pull in with it open source, just like we saw internet, you know, pull in Linux um, that, that enabled a lot of new business models. Boris, thanks for sharing those uh, three you know, kind of predictions of site. I want to know also about what is going to be the f focus for Freedom Fi in 2021. Yeah, so this year we spent um, doing a whole bunch of uh, um, customer pilots and proving out 
um, the technology. So, you know, our main product is a, um, basically an opinionated distribution of an open source project called Magma, which we deliver as a combination of two things, something called the Freedom Fight Gateway, which is what you would deploy at the cell site and plug in your small cell into it, as well as uh, um, the uh, SaaS piece, uh, which is basically a you know, hardened version of Magma Orchestrator. So this year we spent um, you know, um, a lot of effort um, just making sure that this model works um, and that you know, kind of the market is receptive to um, this type of opinionated approach for you know, packaging the open source Magma distribution. I think we've gotten quite a few proof points that it does. Um, we've launched the product um, about a month ago. Um, into beta. So next year is really going to be uh, about kind of moving it to like this next stage. Um, the first stage was, you know, prove out the model, get, you know, a dozen customers or so using it. Um, next year is going to be kind of, you know, starting to really kind of scale the business. So grow the team. Um, you know, now a lot of the pilots that we did this year are looking to scale into thousands of sites next year, which will require completely different degree of rigor and maturity of support organization. So that's what we're going to be focusing primarily next year. Uh, Boris, thanks for uh, sharing these predictions. And uh, I think we might see each other this year, but hopefully we'll see each other again next year. Thank you. Yeah. If we don't, then happy new year. <laughs>